I'm Dr Hilary Weeks, Senior Lecturer in English Literature at the University of Gloucestershire. I'm Aidan Burns, Senior Lecturer in English and Cultural Studies at the University of Wolverhampton. And Aidan and I share an interest, a research and a teaching interest, in this whole idea of psychogeography. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, about that term, and it's a somewhat contested term. What do you understand by, by that, Aidan? Big question, I know. I, yeah, I've I've always understood it through the cultural studies teaching I've done mm -hmm. as reinscribing the um, unspoken histories and experiences of a place into its official discourse. So it's the bits that don't re get recorded in town planning documents or documentaries or big plans. It's how people have lived in a place and the emotional and sensory experiences of a particular location. Um, so. In Sinclair does London a lot, and he does the um, ignored areas, the waste ground, wastelands, um, flyovers, mm. bus stops, um, bombs, bomb sites. Mm. It's derived from mm. all those French thinkers who said the way to experience a city is not to read about it, but to walk it. To walk it, the idea of uh, derive or drift as well. We were talking about this. We, th we think it's probably Bordeaux who came up with that term, mm. but also Michel uh, uh, de Clos. Mm. Clo, who yeah. wrote the, the, uh, uh, a book about writing around, walking around San Francisco. But I know you and I are both big fans of Ian Sinclair's London Orbital, and even to walk around a motorway or a motorway circuit is a transgressive act because if motorways are not built for, you know, it's illegal to walk on or alongside a motorway. So doing that is, is in itself radically transformative. Absolutely, yeah, it's inscribing slowness onto a place and disturbing the kind of top-down plans or the eagle-eyed plans of a location and actually insisting on the humanity mm. of any space. So it's, re it's a very political act, I think, mm. psychogeography. Oh yes, yeah, indeed. I love the way he, he uses um, writers like Ian Nairn and mm. other architectural and town planning writers in order to think about how you might radicalise uh, a landscape as well. Absolutely. It's a really good scene there in um, Book on London, back in print. Excellent. That was just so this long. this year, isn't it? It's just come yeah. back as well. Yeah. And then there are people like Will Self, um, who I think mm. is really interesting because he's interested in places that don't seem to have a history. Um, he did one walk from his house to Heathrow Airport, took a yes. plane, and then landed at LAX and walked to where he was staying there. And part, of, part of it was the experience of what Mark O'Day calls non-places, um, mm. the, the steel and plate glass that appears to reject specific times and places. And yet you can discover a culture there if you look hard enough. If you look hard, and including erased cultures as well, Absolutely. as Sinclair is interested in the in the post-war history of, of um, mental hospitals mm. in, in and around the London orbital section and, and trace and traces those those lost those lost um, paths really. But I'm also interested in a particular use that's a novelist like say Peter Ackroyd has used a, a, a psychogeography and I think this is where psychogeography becomes in some ways a literary trope rather than a political or geographical one in novels for example mm -hmm. like like Hawksmoor. Um, are you interested much in the occult or Fortean uh, ideas behind psychogeography? Only if you're reading actually Ackroyd's novels and people like him. The, it, yeah. Occult stuff is not something I've ever naturally come to but it is fascinating seeing alternative discourses of mm. events or histories that you think are familiar mm. and I suppose I'm slightly wary of them because it can shade into the sort of conspiracy theory stuff that floods the web sure, but, at the, yes. but at the same time there clearly is um, a cultural subconscious that is submerged mm. and I think paying attention to that can tell us a lot more about not just a place but the culture that is erased or survives around the edges. Or we, and which correspondingly is built on top. I'm thinking That's of someone right. just someone like Brick Lane in London, mm. uh, huge no Jewish, mm. Irish, mm. Uh, and now Bengali, mm. and, and and who knows what what the, what the future will bring bring as well. Absolutely, and it's the hybridity that makes these places mm. interesting. And yet, it's hybridity that gets erased, not by not particularly by the inhabitants, but by the census takers, the town planners political authorities yeah. and we forget that we move into a place and we don't make it new we we imbibe to some extent and certainly that's that's Ackroyd's point and yeah. Sinclair's point is that you can't help imbibing these things and it changes you and it changes your culture yeah, indeed Aidan thanks very much yeah.